I am a dad of three kids and my kids are now at school. And the more that I'm seeing firsthand the way that schools operate, I'm now realising the more I was lied to as a kid. And I think everything we are taught and told and the way that we are brainwashed by the media, by the education system, by the government, the status quo, it is crazy. And how untrue it is. I can't believe people still buy in to the bull crap that is taught in schools and in the media. You know, it's just nonsense. So I'm going to share some of the things. I'm going to challenge some of the things that you might believe to be true, which is actually not so. And I'm going to start right from school and I'm going to go right up till retirement. And this video might change your life. It might change the course of your life, the whole direction of your life. Because it's not just about what you know and learning new things. It's also about unlearning some of the nonsense that we've been taught that's actually incorrect. And I'm speaking as somebody that makes millions of pounds every single year, that failed in school, that failed in just about everything that I was told would help me become successful, flunked out of school age 16, never went to university, and um, the banks, the, this is another thing, the banks and the government and the schools and the education system and the media, in, I, I don't want to sound like a conspiracist or anything, but they're all singing this, this same song and people are buying into it. The masses are buying into it. And it's keeping people flat, broke, poor. So first thing is this. At school. At school, they teach you, certainly for me. I'm not, I can only speak from my experience. That your exams are the be all and end all. And you spend, what, 16 years of your entire life working on getting good exams. Okay, fine. Now listen, I don't want to demotivate kids. I have this problem with my kids. I don't want to say to them, don't try at school. But I'm thinking, man, I was like sweating, losing sleep over the fact that I, I, I might not get bad at grades. And you think, don't you? You think that if you get bad school grades, your whole life is going to be terrible afterwards. It's not. Okay. Um, schools teach you ultimately to comply. You know what schools are actually teaching you to be? They're teaching you to be brilliant employees. You want to be a good employee? Go to school. They'll teach you to perform. Don't challenge. Don't question things. Put your hand up when you want to go to the toilet. Work hard. Don't work smart. Don't copy someone else's work. That's cheating. That's not cheating. That's called being smart. Find someone smart and see what they did. That's what you do in business. They even tell you not to use a calculator. Certainly when I was at school, don't use a calculator, that's cheating. What? In business, you always use a calculator. Don't rely on mental math, but it could be flawed. So the whole school system, and this is the thing that really gets me, okay? I have tried relentlessly to bring financial literacy into schools in the UK. I have created curriculums. I have banged on doors. I have tried, but... They actually don't want that. Because imagine if kids were taught about finance at school. Imagine if kids were taught about passive income. Oh! At school. They were like, so what, what, why do I need to go get a job and trade my time for money and work for £2,000 a month for 40 years, for 40 hours a week to then retire on 40% of what I couldn't afford to live on in the first place? When I can just make £2,000 in passive income from one good deal. Why don't I spend all my time trying to find one good deal? Even if it takes me three years to find that good deal, bang, and then I've got the passive income. They don't want kids knowing that. They don't want kids understanding the difference between assets and liabilities. Why not? Because it's brainwashing. Because then when you leave school, you go to university, which is going to help you get a job. Right? And then when you get a job, now it's a case of, right, now I work hard for my boss. I put into a pension, I save up as much money as I can, and I put that money where? In the bank. And this is where the banks come in on it, because this is the thing. The more people that have got money saved in the bank for a rainy day, 20 grand, 30 grand, I'm talking, okay? That's the best. If one person, as far as the bank's concerned, if one rich person like me has three million pounds in, that's a problem. Why? Because that rich person might say, can I get my three mil back, please? 
By the way, I've done this. I've gone to the bank and said, can I have my millions? And they've said, whoa, we can only give you five grand a day. It freaks them out. Why does it freak them out? Because of something called fractional reserve banking. What is fractional reserve banking? Fractional reserve banking is a, a legal law where the banks are allowed to invest the money that you put in the bank and they invest it themselves and go make a ton of money. So you put 100 grand in the bank, They'll take at least 90 grand of that and they'll invest it. They'll loan it out. They'll invest it in stocks and shares. They'll invest it in real estate and they'll see a sky high return. They'll probably make 20, 30, 50, 100% return on investment and they'll give you 0.2%. So of course, the banks want people to work hard, be employees and then put that money in the bank for a rainy day because the, if they've got millions of people that have all got 20, 30 grand in the bank, then they can then run a billion pound business off the back of it. So the banks want you to think that. Of course they do, <laughs> right? So the idea of having money in the bank, and do you know what as well? I, I, I mean, I can't believe this. When I started getting a lot of money, I started thinking, what happens if my bank goes bust? If I've got three million in the bank and the bank goes bust, what happens? What happens is you're only insured up to the first 85 grand, the rest you lose. So the whole concept of like investing in a bank is really safe. Mm, it's kind of not. The whole concept of having a job is much safer than having a business. Mm, it's kind of not. You know how many people have been made redundant and just fired? And, like, a good job for life doesn't exist. The average person by the age of 40 goes through over two dozen jobs. Like, it's just not. But people still believe it. They're still hanging on to this concept, you know? And then, and then what? And then you invest into property. And of course, the system wants you to not invest into property. They want you to buy a house with your feelings because it's a dumb deal. And the dumber the deal, the better. And they, of course, want you to live in the house, not rent it out. How do they stop you buying houses to rent out? The first thing they do is they tax the crap out of you. So if you're, if you're an amateur investor or just an average person and you buy a house to rent it out, you're going to get hit with Section 24 tax, which doesn't apply for the rich folks, doesn't apply for the big companies, only for the amateurs. So you're going to get smacked with tax. Also, they incentivize people to buy a house to live in it with things like help to buy, lifetime ISA, right to buy. Right to buy has got some pretty good perks to be fair. I like right to buy, but help to buy and lifetime ISAs are a scam, in my opinion, because let me, let me explain. Help to buy, which is what you know, makes me laugh so much because people, when I started out in property investment, when I was like 17, Everyone was like shocked. Like, oh, this is so risky. <gasps> oh my gosh, you're going on a property course and you're spending thousands of pounds to get mentored? That is so risky. Meanwhile, they're going to university to study drama. And everyone's clapping them. Oh, you're going to university. Oh, you're a good boy at school. Oh, you're getting a job. That's so safe. Whoa, Samuel, you're going to get into business? You're investing in products so risky. It's just like ridiculous. And again, it's because of the brainwashing. People are like sheep. They read the newspapers. So where was I? Help to buy. Yeah, help to buy. What is help to buy? Help to buy is where the government help you to buy a property. Why do they want you to buy a property? Because they want you to buy a property, not as an investment. They want you to buy a property to live in. Why? Because if you're buying a property that you live in, it makes you 10 times more likely to not want to quit your job. Let me explain. You're renting a house. You're paying a grand a month rent. Eh, it's cool. You can start a business. Worst case, you can always move into a cheaper, you can move into a room share or an apartment, you're renting, it's cool, but you're, you own a house, now you're locked down, you've got responsibility, you've got security, but security comes with responsibility, and now you'll be thinking, man, if I start a business and it doesn't work, and then I get fired, and I've got my mortgage, I've got this rope around my neck, so... They want that to happen because the more afraid you are, the more like a sheep you are and the less like you, likely you are to be entrepreneurial. And you might say, but why would they not want you to be entrepreneurs? Well, <laughs> if they wanted you to be entrepreneurs, would they not at least have one class at school, one mandatory class that taught the basics of investment and business? But they don't. Nothing. So help to buy. So the government help you. How do they help you? They help you by giving you the majority of the deposit, which means you've only got to put down 5% deposit, the rest you'll get from the government. And people think, well, that sounds good. Mm, it's not, it's terrible. Why? Number one, because you have to live in the house. You can't rent it out, which means it's a liability, it's not an asset because it's not making you any money. It's a rope around your neck. I invest in property. I invest in properties that make me money because I rent them out and they give me cash flow. 
But if you're living in it yourself, you're not making cash flow. Number two, it only applies to new build homes. Why new build homes? Because the rich are the people that create the rules. And it's not really the help to buy scheme. Really, it's the help to sell scheme. The scheme is created for rich people that want to build and develop properties, but are worried that they won't be able to sell them at the end. So the help to buy scheme is really the help to sell scheme, see? It's the case of all of these schemes. Lifetime is the same. Also, you have to pay the government back. So it's not like they're giving you the money. You have to pay back in full. What does that? And also with new builds, do you know what happens when you buy a brand new build house? It drops in value by 10% straight away because it's no longer a new build. So the government will help me with a help to buy. No, you're buying it. You're borrowing the money from the government. But then your debt on the house is suddenly more than the house itself because the value of the house drops. Now you're in negative equity. Now you really better be a good boy and stick around at your job and get a promotion. So it's all lies. The media are all lies. Now, when I say the media are lies, technically, they might say we're not lying because what they do is they do things like they'll say, allegedly, blah, 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 blah. But the sentence is a lie. But you, you, can't, you, can't, you can't sue them or say anything because they'll just say, no, 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 we said allegedly. One source said, and then they'll tell their lie. What do you mean one source said? Who said it? Name the person, some random person on the street. And then the media can then literally publish the story and just say one source said, be careful what you read in the newspapers. And everyone wants to retire. And then they retire when they're 69 years old. And then they realize that they got to the top of the ladder and they climbed the wrong ladder. They retire when they're 69 years old and then they have to go get a paper round to top up the bills because energy prices tripled, but wages didn't. We've been lied to.